Please be seated. Again, welcome to all. I want to welcome the generous families who made this gift possible to the Basilica of St. Mary. Thank you very much. We're honored by your presence. I want to also welcome our interfaith uh, leaders uh, with whom I minister and work in, in the area. Uh, we have a, a wonderful interfaith clergy group that uh, Michael O'Connell was a part of getting started. So we welcome Rabbi Marcia Zimmerman, who is a friend uh, to all of us, uh, Tim Hart Anderson and others who are here. You're all very welcome on this uh, glorious day, this Pentecost. I was speaking with my father, Bill, uh, a number of years ago, and he's always had a great curious mind and is a thinker. Uh, and he said, he posed to me this question, he said, why if the Holy Spirit was dynamically and powerfully present in the early church that could be clearly seen as, and as has been chronicled in Luke's Acts of the Apostles from which we read and hear uh, throughout the Easter season, why do we not see that same powerful manifestation? And the only response I could make, uh, you know, quickly was the fact that perhaps we're not as open in our modern day to the power of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps our hearts need to be more open to that power. And I think there is room for growth for disciples of Jesus to be more open to the power of the Spirit. We see this interestingly in Catholic healing ministries where the power of the Spirit is invoked and miracles happen, spiritual healings, physical healings. We know the Spirit of God is indeed a dynamic presence. Friends, we've heard a lot about the Eucharistic revival in the Catholic uh, tradition here in the United States, and in fact, that is beginning. Uh, the bishops of Minnesota were up at the headwaters of the Mississippi, and next weekend there will be uh, a group here at the Basilica and then making uh, a pilgrimage to the Cathedral of St. Paul. And that's a wonderful thing. The Eucharist in the Catholic tradition is the source and summit of our Catholic faith. I would say, friends, that we need a pneumatic revival. We need a revival of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church and in the lives of Christian disciples. And that requires an openness of our hearts to the power and gift of the Spirit. This can happen. It happened in the early church, as I said. It certainly happened in the lives of the saints, uh, some of which uh, are, are uh, depicted in the, in the statues and the icons here at the Basilica. In the early church, they proclaimed the mighty acts of God. And they were also instruments of the mighty acts of God in their lives. In my morning prayer, on most mornings, uh, I thank and praise God. That's the beginning of my morning prayer. And when I praise God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, when I come to the Holy Spirit, these words have come to me, and they're, and they're consistent with the tradition. I praise the Holy Spirit, the one who vivifies, sanctifies, and unifies. The one who brings life. In the beautiful sequence that we sang uh, right before the Alleluia, we sang of the dynamic power of the Spirit that brings forth life for all. And the Holy Spirit does have the power to renew the face of the earth as we sang in the responsorial psalm, but first, that Spirit must renew us, our hearts, the hearts of all believers, and not only Christians, but all, all who believe to vivify, to sanctify. What does that mean to sanctify? We'll do a little interactive homily here, a Socratic method. What does it mean to sanctify? To make holy, thank you. You might be a theologian or just a good, uh, to make holy, to make us more like God. This is who we are called to be, to, meet, to be more of a reflection of Jesus in our life and our society to make holy, and then finally to unify, to make the church more one, to make the church more united in faith. This is what we saw 
and, and heard proclaimed in the first reading. It was one message manifested through many languages and many cultures. Unity in diversity. This is who we are called to be. And friends, it saddens me in the Catholic Church that we are divided. We are divided. Uh, Pope Francis is gonna be on 60 Minutes tonight. Give it, a, give it a watch. If you're not a Pope Francis fan, I know there are many Pope Francis fans here at the Basilica, including your pastor. Be open to his beautiful message. We need to be more one in the Catholic Church. We need to be more one among our interfaith uh, colleagues, our, our fellow believers, more one among fellow Christians. The Spirit does this work, but we have to be open. The readings again speak of unity and diversity. In the second reading, we hear that we are one body, and yet the Spirit manifests a diversity of gifts. Isn't that beautiful? What a beautiful image, Paul's inspired image of the body. What is your gift, friends? What is the unique gift that you've been given? Has, have, have you put that gift at service of your family, the communities of which you are part? The Holy Spirit is calling us all to discern and gener generously offer our gifts. I want to end by highlighting Michael and Sue, and I'll have a few other words to say at the conclusion of our liturgy. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed in these last, uh, last week is both Michael and Sue are really exceedingly humble. And they're, they're a bit overwhelmed by all of this attention, and that's okay. Uh, and uh, they were honored at Temple Israel in such a beautiful uh, uh, event on Wednesday. And they both want to point to other people whenever they're honored. But I just want to take a minute to say it is Michael O'Connell's openness to the Holy Spirit that brought life to this community. His openness, it was his curious mind, his compassionate manner, uh, being an image of Jesus, a good shepherd. That bright brought life, great life to this community of faith. But not only this community of faith, it rippled beyond this community uh, to the interfaith leaders uh, with whom he worked so closely. In the Jeremiah program, uh, there's only one uh, conclusion, that that was a master stroke of the Holy Spirit that Michael was an instrument of, lifting up families, bringing flourishing. And his uh, wonderful spouse, Sue Hayes, uh, equally humble, but also equally open to the Holy Spirit in her life, in her manner, uh, in her encouragement of women leaders in the church and beyond. Uh, in her work with the block party and all that she did uh, lifting up this community. That openness to the Spirit has brought life to this community, and we are very deeply thankful, and it provides a model for all of us going forward.